Good afternoon, and welcome back to this as part of our ongoing YouTube series on the U.S. capital markets, interest rates, the Fed. My name is Bill Addis, president of Amherst Financial Training. And what we're here to talk about today is what I call Bonds 101, because the bond market is really an anomaly to many people. You know, you'd probably be surprised to know that here in the U.S., the bond market as of year end last year was a $53 trillion market. It was bigger than the stock market. And yet most people aren't as comfortable with bonds as they are with stocks. I'll bet you individually, if I were to ask any of you, at whatever level you're personally at, you probably have a better understanding of stocks than of bonds. So we want to demystify the bond market a little bit for some of you. And the reason for this, quite honestly, is very recently, I've been starting to promote the opportunities available in a government security called I-bonds. These are an inflation-linked security that offer a great return right now. And we just did a video on that recently. You'll see in our YouTube library if you're interested. It's a 9.6% government-backed yield. That's a heck of a yield in today's market. So there's a video on that. But what that raised is that raised the question of what is a bond? Because the government markets these I-bonds as a bond. And they really aren't. They're a savings certificate. You know, some of you might be familiar from your childhood with those Series E and Series H savings certificates you got from Grandma or Aunt Ruth. Well, the I bonds and the E's and the H's, they're not bonds really, they are savings certificates. But the government calls them bonds and that complicates things. What I would like to talk about for just a few moments is for you to understand this $53 trillion market of true bonds in the market. So we're going to spend just a couple of moments demystifying the jargon, the terminology, and the application for true bonds. And as a veteran of the bond market for 40 years, I hope to bring you some perspective for that. So here's the issue. When an institution like a government or a corporation wants to borrow money, they are most likely to issue a bond. A bond is simply a loan, right? When a corporation issues a stock, they're selling ownership. You know that. When a corporation or a government issues a bond, they're borrowing money. Now, in that, the unit that these loans come in, and I want you to think of a true bond as a loan, the unit of these loans always comes in $1,000 denominations. Well, again, what I'm talking about now, I'm not being specific to any one type of bond. I, well, this is true of all bonds. Corporates, governments, municipals, all come in $1,000 denominations. And that's referred to as the par value, the principal value, the face value, the notional value, all that terminology is interchangeable. It's the unit of the loan. Now, the other significant feature about a bond is it has a maturity, right? There is that point at which the borrower has to pay you back. And when the bond matures, you get your $1,000 back. And as silly as it sounds, the fact that bonds have a maturity and you know, assuming the issue is still in business, that you're gonna get your money back that's a safety and a security to bonds that you obviously don't have with equities. And that's why a lot of asset managers, insurance companies, mutual funds, pension funds, love that benefit of bonds that you know when you're gonna get your money back. Now, along the way, bonds pay you a rate of interest, right? You earn an income by lending money to that institution. And that interest is in the form of a coupon. So, for example, the U.S. government just recently sold a 10-year maturity government bond, and they have agreed to pay investors 2.5% for the next 10 years. So buying a bond is like almost like buying an annuity. You know how much you're going to earn each year in terms of your interest, and then at maturity, you get your $1,000 back. It's just that simple. So when we talk about bond maturities here in the U.S., we have maturities very short. I mean, the U.S. government issues treasury securities with maturities as short as one month. Corporations issue short-term investments. And we also have bonds with maturities as long as 30 years. The U.S. government, corporations, municipalities often will borrow money for 30 years. And in fact, in many areas of the world, they have even longer maturities. UK, Europe are starting to sell 50-year maturity bonds. Here in the U.S., we seem to be stuck at that 30. So there's a lot more to talk about bonds. And what I want to stress is the jargon and lingo of bonds I know can be very intimidating. So during these series, we're going to do a series of Bond 101s, and we'll continue to update you on the features, the characteristics, and more importantly, what's going on in the real world today. Because I keep saying during this series, we are in unprecedented times relative to what interest rates are doing, the economy, the Fed, 
and there are opportunities here. And I do want to put one more commercial in because I feel I have to wave the flag at every opportunity. These I-bonds with a 9.6% coupon for the next six months, these warrant some attention. So I would direct you back to that video if you're so interested. So thank you for the opportunity. We'll be continuing with the series. Look forward to working with you.